Welcome back my fellow Python programmers to a brand new video and in this one we're going to be creating a guessing game as an exercise in Python and we'll be exploring the following topics. So if at any point you feel that you're enjoying the contents of this video please make sure to slap that like button because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay so this is going to be the numbers guessing game. So I'm going to give you the outline outline of this guessing game then you are going to try your best to do it on your own and then I will do it afterwards but this is a great way for you to test the waters before I even start so first of all you need to write a function that is the numbers game that doesn't take any arguments next when we run the function you need to choose or the function chooses a random integer between 0 and 100 100 should be included something to keep in mind then we ask the user to guess what number has been chosen. So the user now has to start getting guesses. Each time, this is very important, each time that means that there are going to be multiple guesses, the user enters a guess, the program indicates the following. One, it's too high, two, it's too low, or three, it's correct. So whenever a user inputs a number, we need to know whether it's too low, too high, or correct. Next, if the user guesses correctly, the program exits out, otherwise the user is asked to try again. This ties in into the each time that I told you about. I'm not going to give it away, it has to do something with loops. The program only exits after the user guesses correctly. Alright, so if you want to try and tackle this challenge, or this is not the challenge, this is going to be the challenge, this is the project, if you want to try and tackle it on your own, then please pause the video and try to do it, if not, I'm going to start it right now. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a new Python file in here and I've created or started by defining a new function that is called the numbers game. It does not take any parameters. And just in case you don't know what functions are, these are blocks of code that do a specific task. And in this case, the task is going to be to run a number guessing game. If you have any problems with functions, you can always refer to the video. I will link it at the top. And if there's any issue at any point, you can always find it in the playlist that you can find on my channel of all that you need to know about Python basics. All right, so now we want to start getting a random integer. And for that, we need to import the random module. This line imports the random module that I just told you about, which contains all the functions for generating random numbers. This is necessary for the game to pick a random number as a target for the user to try and guess. And if you want, you can even hold down control and you can see that this becomes sort of a link. And when you click on it, you actually go to that module and you can read through it. As you can see, these all of these functions, all of these close to 1000 lines are now available to us just by this simple import line. And now inside of the function, we can actually get this random number. Okay, and as you can see, this is how we got the random number by simply using the rand end function that is part of the random module. And the way we were able to access this function and actually call it is by this dot notation right here. Now, two things in here. First of all, you'll notice that we have the squiggly yellow line. This is just because the functions in Python like to have two blank spaces above it and two blank spaces below it. This does not cause an error. It just, well, makes sure that we don't have any of these weird looking lines. And it's also better for our looks. Now, something very important that was required of us in the steps that I showed you was that 100 is included. Some of you might have thought that this should have been 101. And this is where reading documentation comes into play. If I hover the rand int for a bit, you can see that it returns a random integer in the range a and b, which we've provided two integers, including both endpoints. That means that the zero is included and the 100 is included. This is different than the range. So if I try to do range, for example, let me see if I can get the documentation. So fetches the documentation, the stop in here. So the range, stop, range, object, start, stop, and step. And no, it's not included. There we go. Start inclusive, stop exclusive. So usually what would 
what we would do to include the 100 we would use 101 because the 100 would be included the 101 would not be included it would be excluded but in the case of the random integer it is already included that's why always make sure to read the documentations next we need to start getting answers from the user so we already said that the user will keep asking until they get the correct answer that means we have repeated action until a certain condition is met which again means or this is a great opportunity for us to use while loops okay there we go we've created a while true loop which means that this while loop will keep on going forever now you might be thinking how is this while loop is gonna go on forever and by the way while loops i'll link it at the top it's always in the playlist I have no doubt. Uh, while loop, how will it stop? Well, at some point, we are going to break out. Whenever we have a while true, that means that at some point, we have to have a break under some specific condition. Now, once we have that, we create a new variable that is the user underscore guess. And in there, we get an input that is right here and we convert it into an integer because remember whenever we're getting inputs they are always strings so we need to convert them into integers because we're going to be comparing this user guess with the answer that we've created at the top okay here we go this is where we compare the user guess that we just got right here to the answer this lines this line checks if the user's guess is equal to the randomly chosen answer that we had at the top. If so, the condition evaluates to a true. And once that condition evaluates to a true, then the block of code inside of the if statement is executed. If statements link it at the top. We print out that this was indeed the correct guess. This is just a, a stepping point for the user to know, oh, I got this correctly. This is why the program stopped. And we break out of the loop. Remember, I told you that we have to break at some point again break is whenever we jump out of an infinite loop this line is only reached if the user's guess is correct which means that we effectively stop the entire game but if the condition is not met if the answer that the user got or uh, the user entered was not the answer that we were looking for we need to indicate to the user if the guess that he has was too high or if it was too low because otherwise how in the hell is he going to be able to guess the answer so let's do that all right there we go so if we do not get the correct answer which means we do not reach this code we continue on to execute as always and in here we check if the user guess was less than the answer if it was we tell the user that your answer which is right here is too low otherwise we tell him that it's too high because remember in here we can use the else because it's either less than the answer or it's greater than the answer now the third option would be if it's equal to the answer but we've already handled it in here also something to keep in mind that i did not mention is this little f right here this is called an f string and i also covered this in one of the videos which is the very very first one i recommend you go watch it if you don't have or you don't know what this is right here the final thing that we need to do is we need to actually call this function because functions don't work automatically on their own if i right click and i run the exercise one you can see that nothing happens because the function needs to be called and it's very easy to call a function i don't even need to speed up the process i simply type in numbers game and i hit tab whenever i see suggestions so this is our final uh, code when i right click and i run as you can see right here it asks me what is your guess and i have no idea let's try let's try 52 and it tells me that it's too low let's try 60 too low let's try 80 too low nice 90 still too low 100 is it possible 100 too high okay nice uh, 95 too low 99 too high 98 oh come on 97 96 there we go so the correct answer was indeed 96 if you want to cheat just for the sake of testing things out you can always print out your answer right here and that way you will just be 
cheating. So right here it's 98. I mean, it, for some reason it's choosing a very, very, very high numbers. So let's see, 12, uh, too low, 99, too high, 98, hit enter, correct answer. And there we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you tried your best at actually tackling this mini project or exercise to be more correct. And uh, I hope you got it. I hope if even if you didn't get uh, how this was made and if you had any problems at any point you can always refer back to my uh, other videos on the channel on the channel if you have any questions of course you can always leave them in the comments below and now that we've seen how this exercise is done it's time for a bit of a challenge maybe some of you find found it very easy very beginner like the challenge is where you can shine so let's go ahead and look at that Okay, time to add some pressure. Modify this program such that it gives the user only 10 chances to guess the correct number. Now, if you want, you can pause the video right here and go do that challenge, or I can give you these steps right now. So, pause the video, go, three, two, one. First of all, you'll need to add a variable that is called the guess limit and set it to 10 for the maximum guesses allowed. And of course, you don't have to set it to 10. You can set it to whatever you want. You can even make it random if you'd like. Next, you'll need to add a variable guesses taken and initialize it to zero to count the number of guesses the user has already used. Change the while loop condition to continue only while the guesses taken is less than the guesses limit. After each guess, increment the guesses taken by one. Add a condition inside the loop to check if guesses taken has reached the guess limit, and if so, print out a certain message, well, to tell the user that they're done. And finally, test out the game and make sure that it works. So, pause the video right now and go do the challenge. Okay, so basically right here I just did the first two points where I initialized the guesses limit to 10 and the guesses taken to 0. We just The most important part in here is to do it as soon as the numbers game is called and to do it before you go into the while loop. Okay, and right here what I did is I changed the condition on the while loop. So before the while loop would go on forever, as long as... It's true, uh, which is actually forever, or to be more specific, just until we get to this break. But that's not guaranteed because the user might never get the correct answer, even if we point it out to him. Anyways, we change the condition right here, and then inside, whenever you have a condition on the while loop, you need to make sure that there is something that is changing it inside of that while loop. So in here, we're checking if the guess is taken is less than the guess limit. The guess limit is 10. The guess is taken is 0. If there is nothing changing the guess is taken right here, this loop will go on forever. Just imagine that this break in here does not exist. I commented out using control forward slash. Just click on any line, control for forward slash, and you get that. Anyways, there always has to be a way to change the condition on the while loop, otherwise you are stuck with an infinite loop. And in here, guess is taken plus equals one. What does this mean? A lot of students get confused on how this looks, and I find it so uh, basic for me that I sometimes forget to explain it, but basically this is what it means. It means that we took the guess is taken variable, which is, let's say, at the start is zero. We added plus one to it, and then we put it back into the guess is taken, and now guess is taken is one. So we've incremented by one. Now it's one, the next time it's one plus one equals two, and then two is put back into the guess is taken, which, increment it, which increments it one by one. Okay, so as you can see, I did not change any of these following if statements because they already work very well. The only thing that I did need to add was the following statement right here. So basically, once we finish up with the if statements right here and none of the answers were correct, we are always incrementing the guesses that were taking, taken, taking, and or guesses taken, that's the variable name, the guesses that were taken, taking, oh my god, anyways, uh, finally, if we do reach that limit, the game is going to stop, because we exit out of the while loop, and it's, I mean, it's polite, it's the least that we can do, just to tell the user that the guesses that were taken is equal to the guesses limit, so you don't have any more guesses, and the correct answer was... 
and we give them the answer. So let's go ahead and test out our program. Whenever you finish something like this, I'm just going to keep it right here just in case you're still copying the code. So what is your guess? I'm going to say um, 50. It's always good to start in the middle just like we, just so we know where we should be going. So it's too low. Let's go higher. Let's go 75. Too high. Nice. Uh, let's go uh, 60. Too low. Okay. 65. Too high. Nice. So we know that it's 62. No, we know that it's 63. There we go. So the correct answer was indeed 63. Now, there are a lot of setbacks and problems with this. Let's try uh, to run the code and check if we run out of guesses. Uh, I'm going to actually change the guesses to like 5 because we don't have time for 10. Run. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Okay, so as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, five guesses in total, and five was too low, and you don't have any more guesses, and the right answer was 56. So everything seems to be working fine. Okay, fellow Python programmers, congratulations on finishing the first exercise in the series. If you liked it, please make sure to like the video. And if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. In the next video, we're going to be... I had to check because I honestly forgot. Uh, we are going to be creating a summing uh, exercise. So if you want to continue on your Python programming journey, click right here. Let's go. This is where you should be clicking. Mm.